Hi Stampin' Friends, I'm Beth Arnold with craftwithbeth.blogspot.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Virginia. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, I will show you how to make this adorable Thanksgiving treat holder. Put one at everybody's place setting or hand them to your guests as they leave your Thanksgiving party. Let's get started. First, we'll score the base. The base measures two inches by seven and a quarter. With the seven and a quarter side along the top of your Simply Scored scoring tool, score at three and one eighth and at four and a quarter. Next, punch each end with the scallop tag topper punch. Fold all of your score lines. and burnish with your bone folder. Should look like a U. Put that to the side for now. Next, we'll stamp the plaid paper. This stamp comes from the Tiny Keepsakes stamp set that goes with the Tiny Curvy Keepsake box. First, stamp vertically toward the very top of your plaid piece. It's okay if the stamp goes over the edges. Stamp off to get the extra ink. Ink your stamp again. For larger stamps, I like to bring the stamp pad to the stamp instead of putting it on the, the pad itself. Next, you're gonna stamp closer to the bottom edge and again, it's okay if it goes over the edges. And stamp off the extra. You'll see a small line in the bottom here. This is at the very bottom of your treat holder. You can stamp this a third time if you like, but you don't have to. Next, we'll stamp the turkey. We're using Early Espresso ink. This is a scrap of very vanilla. It should be about three inches wide by maybe two and a half inches. As long as the scrap of paper is bigger than a two inch diameter circle, that should be fine. Next, we'll color in the turkey using watercolor pencils. I chose Night of Navy, Crushed Curry, Daffodil Delight, Pumpkin Pie, Real Red, basic black and early espresso to color in the turkey. But you can use any of the colors that you would like. I started with the band of feathers toward the back of the turkey. And I used a heavier hand to color in the feathers here. Because I stamped this in the classic ink pad, which is a water-based ink pad, I'm not using any kind of blending tools to blend the watercolor pencils into the next color I'm using. If you wanted to, you could use stays on jet black ink and then use your blending tools to blend your watercolor pencils. But I hear I wanted a softer look.
Next, we'll punch out our turkey with the two inch circle punch. Both the turkey and the greeting for this project come from the Day of Thanks stamp set. This stamp set was on my top 10 list for the 2019 holiday catalog because it is very traditional. I like the image of the turkey. I also like the greetings. I like the font and I like the sayings. This turkey feather is also nice. I think it would go well with the free as a bird set. This is definitely a must have stamp set for Thanksgiving. There are two ways to do the greeting for this treat holder. You can emboss it with the copper embossing powder like I did here, or you can stamp it with the copper metallic ink pad. Both of them are equally beautiful. It's up to you which one you choose. Or you could do a mixture of both, the metallic ink pad and the heat embossing. Here's how I heat emboss the greeting for this treat holder. First, I rub the embossing buddy over my scrap of very vanilla cardstock. This will help lessen the static. Then, I generously inked up my greeting stamp with Versamark ink and stamped in the center of my scrap. Next, cover the greeting with the copper embossing powder. Because the font is so little, I like to be a little extra generous with the powder and make sure all of my letters are covered. Next, you'll use your heat tool to emboss the greeting. I use my bone folder to hold down the scrap of very vanilla paper so it won't fly away and that my hands don't get too hot. Next, we'll punch our greeting using the classic label punch. Make sure you let your embossing powder and cardstock cool before you punch it. You can see how shimmery and metallic this copper embossing powder is. And it really did a great job with the fine letters of the stamp. Next, we'll assemble the base of our treat holder. I leave the plaid piece unscored so that I can wrap it around each of the bases myself and make sure that everything is lined up. Also, if you scored your plaid piece before you put it on your cardstock base, it may buckle and have wrinkles. After you put your plaid piece on, you will decide which one you would like to be the front and which one you would like to be the back. Then glue your turkey to the center of the front. Next, put mini dimensionals on the back of your greeting. Put them toward the center. and adhere to the front of your treat holder. That turkey is too precious. For the inside of the treat holder, I made an open top box using crumb cake paper. The cardstock measures four inches by three inches. On the four inch side, we'll score at one inch and three inches. Then rotate the cardstock 90 degrees so that the three inch side is along the top of your scoring tool. Score at one inch and two inch. Fold all of your score lines. On the three inch side, cut up the score lines to the first horizontal score line and do the same for the other side. Then you're gonna notch each of the rectangles on either side on the outside. This 
is such a small box, you don't really need to notch them if you don't want to. This is how your box will fold up. And then it'll sit right in the inside of your treat holder. You can use tear and tape or liquid glue to hold this box together. Put glue on the outside tabs on the outside of your box. Then fold up one tab to the center and the other tab to the center at right angles. Then push your outside, your middle tab up to close the box on one end. Rotate the box to the other end and do the same thing. Fold your outer tabs one at a time to the center of the box and then fold your middle tab up to close. And now you have a cute little open top box. This box is big enough to hold an assortment of treats. You can also put chocolate nuggets. This box will hold one chocolate square and two chocolate nuggets. To make the decorative wrapper, cut a one inch by three inch piece of designer series paper and just work the fibers with your bone folder to curl it inwards. Wrap your designer series paper around the chocolate so that the ends meet on the back. Then you can put a little tiny bit of liquid glue or you can use glue dots to hold these in place. I don't recommend a drier adhesive like snail. It's not as strong. The paper is under some tension around the curves here. So you wanna use a little bit of a stronger glue here. Glue dots and uh, the liquid glue would be great. You could even use tear and tape. There you have your wrapped chocolate nuggets. To attach the box, you use a stronger glue like liquid glue, tear and tape on the bottom. Center the box inside the center score lines on your base and press down. Use your bone folder to press the adhesive firmly in place. Next, fill up your treat holder with some treats. I like the chocolate square and the two chocolate nuggets. To close the treat holder, take a piece of copper trim, thread it through the top holes of the treat holder, and tie a bow. Trim the excess ribbon. And there you have it, a festive turkey treat holder for your guest at your next Thanksgiving dinner. This project is very versatile. You can adapt the treat holder for many occasions such as birthdays, Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, any number of occasions. Change the colors, change the stamps, change the greeting and the embellishments. To make it your own. I hope you give this treat holder a try. I would love to see what you create. Be sure to post a photo in the comments below or on my Facebook page, Craft with Beth. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be notified of my new videos. The products used in this video can be found in my online store. The supply list, the purchase links, and the companion blog post with measurements are included in the description below. You can shop with me anytime I'm in my online store. Be sure to visit my blog, craftwithbeth.blogspot.com and subscribe to my newsletter. I would love to welcome you as a new subscriber. If you don't have a demonstrator in the United States and would like a catalog, please submit your request by email to craftwithbeth at gmail.com. Thank you for spending time with me today. And until next time, Happy stamping.